In today's online house fellowship, we're going to be looking into the three types of baptisms for the church age. You know, so many people have uh, really just changed themselves. They have not come to the fullness of God because a lot of people are not aware of these baptisms. And because of that, uh, they have not been able to enter into their place in God's program for their life. Hello, my name is Ambrose and welcome to Ambrose King Online Ministry. Um, online house fellowship so have your bible with you and let us examine the scripture this is going to be rewarding it's going to be a blessing to you glory to god sister naomi god bless you thank you for joining god bless you we are looking at uh, three types of baptisms and i'm just going to go straight to the point because this is, this is very vital this is very important for you to help you mature in your work with Christ, otherwise you will be deceived. The Bible tells us that in the last days, many shall depart from the faith and give heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of demons. You know, for many years I was deceived and I found out that so many people have been deceived. So God has inspired me to be coming online to give these messages and I trust that it will be a blessing to you. One thing about our messages, make sure you have your Bible with you and read the Bible, make sure the messages and the scriptures, they rhyme and always feel free to put your comments. And whatever question you have, I'll be very delighted to uh, respond. So quickly, I'm going to talk about three types of baptisms. But before then, let's just look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. This is the word of God for the church age. You are in the church age. Brothers and sisters, the time is running short. The Antichrist is about to be released and we're about to go into tribulation. Rapture is around the corner and the time is very short. So we are working extra hard to catch up and to unveil the truth of the gospel. And that's why... Um, it's not a burden for me to come online every day to uh, fellowship with you and for you to fellowship with me. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, It says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Very remarkable scripture. When you receive Christ Jesus, it's a translation of your old nature to a new nature. From the old style to the new style. And the word of God is telling us to walk in Christ. To walk in Christ is to walk in His word. Unfortunately, people, so many people have been carried away with tradition and religion and, and they are doing things outside the word of God. He said, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So it is our response to walk in Christ. He says, verse 7, Colossians 2, he said, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And it is very important who teach you. If people who are following seductive gospel and doctrine of demons teach you, wow, you are bound to fail. So, we're talking about three types of baptism. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. It said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying of hands and the, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgments. And this we will do if God permit. It tells us here in verse um two of hebrew chapter one it says of the doctrine of baptisms is it plural it is a baptism say baptisms so there are multiple baptisms in verse one it said therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ so it's very important for you to be well grounded have a foundation of christ then grow up don't remain a child don't remember a baby in the kingdom of god otherwise it, satan will take advantage of you You'll be under false doctrine and you won't even know. So it's talking about, about um, the, it's talking about uh, of the doctrines of baptisms. And that's what we're going to look at. I already talked about laying on of hands. That you don't let anybody just to lay hands on you anyhow. Because it will be transfer of spirit. as far of uh, positive or negative energy or anointing. So um, when you look at that word baptism, the word Greek word is baptizo. That means to be immersed in a thing. When you go back one chapter... Go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 31. It says, For everyone that used milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belong to them that are of full age, even those whom by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. When you come to God, God doesn't want you to remain a babe. Unfortunately, some people have been a babes, been babes in, in churches, in denominations for 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 years. You even see an archbishop still behaving like a babe, a bishop or prophet acting like a babe because they have not grown to start, you know, instead of drinking milk, to start 
uh, 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 chewing on strong meat. And that's why you as a Christian, you're responsible for you to grow in God. So when you look at that Hebrew word, it says that we should, um, of the doctrine of baptisms. Baptism, as I said, is immersion in water. Glory to God. But it tells us, it says, therefore, living the principle of doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. So God wants you to walk in perfection. He wants you to be perfect, no matter where you are. Whether you are in Africa, you are in America, you are in Russia, or Russia, wherever. It doesn't matter the persecution that you're facing. God wants to come in the way you are and begin to perfect you. How? By you being established in Christ, in the doctrine of Christ. Glory to God. When you look at that word perfection, the Greek word is teleostis. Teleostis means completeness, mentally or morally, and spiritual perfection. You see, you can be a perfect person if you stay in the word of God and do the word. It's not enough for you to just go to church. You have to stay in the word and you have to do the word. What does it mean to do the word? You do what the Bible says, not what a doctrine or a, somebody tells you. If it's outside the Bible, don't do it. Do exactly what the Bible says. So that's how you become perfect. You get perfected. You are carried along. You are moving from drinking milk to solid meat. And God begins to unveil things to you. You know, it talks about multiple baptism in verse 2 of Hebrew chapter 2. And the, the word baptism, the Greek word is baptism. It means to immerse, to wash, to place into, to be covered up, to get wet. So baptism means to be immersed. Glory to God. So it's very important for you to have good and right foundation of the doctrine of Christ. Otherwise, you will be misled. One other thing is people try to outsmart God. They try to cut corners. They can't try to think that when they give sacrificially, when they give money to God, you know, have you ever had people say, give and it shall be given to you, good measure, praise that together, shake it together. When you read a few verses above, it talks about mercy and judgment. So have mercy on people. It's not talking about money. So for you to uh, uh, do God's, to, for you to be perfect, you have to do what God says. There's no shortcut with God. And doing God's word is very simple. If you have the right mentor, glory to God. So um, <laughs> don't try to outsmart God or do shortcut. Just do what God wants you to do. Glory to God. He doesn't want you to be in the elementary stage always. Many people, including big bishop, archbishop, prophet, and <laughs> they are so stuck in the elementary stage. It's it's, it's just annoying. It's it's just annoying. So. Um, so you have to move and begin to stay in the word, understand the word of God. And the best person to ask is the Holy Spirit. He's the author of the Bible. Ask him to reveal the truth to you and he will reveal to you. Now quickly, we're going to go to the uh, doctrines of baptism. It talks about plu- uh, multiple baptism. It didn't say baptism. It said baptisms. So there are many. Many people are stuck in, you know, in one baptism. <laughs> but God wants us to have all the three baptisms. Some don't even know about the baptisms. Some don't even know anything. <laughs> but today we are just going to allow the scripture to speak for ourselves. The first type of baptism, the first one is the baptism by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, understand, is not a dove. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's a divine being. Jesus called him he, saying when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will show you. So the Holy Spirit is a personality. It's a divine being. When you look at the Holy Spirit as a personality, as a divine being, he's the father of Jesus. He's the one who conceived Mary. He's the one who brought Jesus forth. He's the one who raised Jesus from the dead. So he's a divine being. Glory to God. So the first baptism is baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let us look at First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. It says, by, it says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews, Gentiles, or whether we be born or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. So it's by the Holy Spirit that you have been brought into Christ. Without the Holy Spirit, you can never be saved. Without the Holy Spirit in your life, you are bound to go to hell. That's why it's very important for you to get saved the right way. It's only when you get saved the Bible way that the Holy Spirit will now immerse you into Christ. It's not about joining church. Joining, going to church is good. It's not about giving. Giving is good. It's about you getting saved the right way so that the Holy Spirit, the divine entity, will now carry you, lift you up from darkness, and put you into light. That's why I say you are a royal priest, a holy nation. God has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. It's not by your own effort. It's by the Holy Spirit himself. So the first baptism is the Holy Spirit. This baptism is performed only by the Holy Spirit the moment you get saved. The split second, the nanosecond that you believe on Jesus and believe that what he did on the cross, the blood that he shed for you, you believe it and you say to him instantly, the Holy Spirit takes you from the dark world and places you into the body of Christ. 
that is the miracle of salvation he doesn't need your cooperation he doesn't need your participation once you say to jesus you mean it he will immerse into christ he will march into the precious blood of jesus the split second that you believe on jesus so that is the first baptism it is the baptism of the holy spirit it's something that happened to you behind the scenes you are not even aware of it that's why we preach the gospel so that when you believe on the right gospel behind the scene the holy spirit himself will baptize you into christ he brings you out of darkness he brings you into the kingdom of god then you cannot lose your salvation that is the miracle of salvation that's why we talk about eternal security but but those who are preaching seducive gospel and doctrine of the demon they don't understand eternal security those who are not even saved they don't understand the concept but this is something that the holy spirit does behind the scenes that you are not aware of so something happened to you the moment you declare jesus to be the lord of your life is what the holy spirit does the moment you declare that and say to you something happened to you that you are not aware of without your participation this is the essential baptism for salvation without this baptism you cannot be saved you cannot go to heaven you can be the nicest person in your church you can be the a, a nice person a giver whatever without the baptism of the holy spirit forget about salvation so that's why i encourage you if you're not saved get saved today by the power of the holy ghost you say the minute you go uh, the holy spirit baptizes you into christ you are saved you are sanctified you are holy you are righteous and he come to seal you unto the day of redemption glory to god that's what the bible says so whether you believe it or not it doesn't matter whether other people preach it or not it doesn't matter these are things that happen behind the scene the second type of baptism is the baptism that jesus himself baptized you he now baptized you into the holy spirit glory to god this is awesome the baptism of jesus is for power oh glory to god you see, if you want to have power <laughs> you don't need to fast 100 days dry fast you don't need to go to the mountains you don't need to go to the native doctor go to psychics you don't need to have somebody pour oil on you lay hands on your throat mantle or to you no all you need to do is allow jesus to baptize you into the holy spirit look at what jesus said in acts chapter 1 and verse 5 he said for john truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence so jesus separated the baptism of john which is the baptism of water into is separate from the baptism into the holy spirit when you are born again and saved god called you into ministry whether you know it or not you are a minister of the gospel that's why you should not have anybody lord anything over you you are a minister but you cannot be able to function in what god has called you onto you are equipped with power and that's why jesus now immerse you in the holy ghost you know charismatics and pentecostals which i used to belong to many years ago until when i found out the errors and now choose to be a bible believer you see they they call this baptism of the holy spirit for tongues so when they see they tell people to begin to pray in tongues blah, 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 they call it baptism into tongues actually it's jesus baptizing you into power but the evidence is you speaking in other tongues jesus baptized you into power by you know jesus baptized you into the power of the holy spirit he immerses you in the power of for service that's why when you look at the holy ghost as a divine being and what he can give to you and reverence him you'll be able to come and rise up and begin to uh, take your place in the program of god otherwise you're going to be a baby in the kingdom of god and the devil will take advantage of you you see the baptism of jesus into the holy spirit is not required for salvation the only one that is required for salvation is baptism of the holy spirit when the Holy Spirit baptizes you to the body of Christ. But this baptism is for power, to equip you with power. Glory to God. So, on the, like on the day of Pentecost, this power came upon the apostles as they gathered in the upper room. Prior to that, they were already baptized by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus blew on them and said, Peace, I live unto you, he said, Receive the Holy Ghost. He blew on them and they got baptized with the Holy Ghost. But on this day of Pentecost, they waited and on the day of Pentecost and they received power. Remember in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Jesus told them to wait until they are clothed, until they are dressed with power. He said, Behold, Jesus said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the, in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Every believer is dressed up, is equipped with power. If you allow Jesus to baptize you into the Holy Spirit, and you have to be aware of that, otherwise you will miss out. Glory to God. You see, this baptism could be separate from salvation uh, experience, or it could be instantly. A lot of time it's good to have both of them instantly or it could be at another day if you choose to you see uh it, it, it's usually evidence with speaking or praying tongue what we call praying tongues when you pray in tongues it's not just to make noise blah 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 but it's charging up the power within you the resident power for service glory to god you don't go to mountain or prophet or native doctor for power allow jesus to immerse you in the holy ghost he's more than willing to immerse you in the holy ghost 
In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, glory to God. Holy Ghost, thank you. I feel your presence already. Jesus said you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be a witness unto him. You see, he didn't say you have to fast for power. Many years ago, I used to go to a place. I was invited to a church where they keep saying, God, give us more power. God, give us more power. God, give us more power. We are fasting. We are doing seven days fasting. We are doing 21 days dry fasting for power so that we can overcome. No, the minute you allow Jesus to baptize you into the Holy Ghost, you are dressed up with the Father of powers himself. The Holy Ghost himself comes to live in you. In Romans chapter 8 and in verse 11, it says, If the Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same thing shall also quicken your mortal body. So the Holy Spirit is already saying you. You just have to allow Jesus to immerse you in his power. So that power can be oozing out from you. Glory to God. The third baptism is the baptism by believers, upon believers, in water. That's when you, um, you, you go, they put inside water and they baptize into the water. That's the third baptism. It, you know, that was what John was practicing. And Jesus also said that those that believe in him and are baptized... You know, believers shall believe that believing in shall also be baptized. So when you are baptizing yourself, when you allow, when you get baptized in water, what you are doing is you are burying the old man. You are telling the old man in you, the old nature, the wicked nature, the sinful nature that you were born with, you are burying it forever. Say, no, you will not rise up in me again. You know, it occurs the moment of salvation when you, uh, it can occur the moment of salvation as you uh, get saved, you can be immersed with the Holy Ghost. At the same time, you can also be baptized in water. So you can do all three at the same time. But unfortunately, some believers, they have not even been water baptized. Some have not even been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some are even not even saved, but they go to church, they go to service and everything. But it's good for us to do what the Bible says so that you don't miss out. Glory to God. See, in this type of baptism, a believer, something like a, pro, a pastor, a priest, will immerse you inside water. And as he immerses you inside water, it's a symbol of you bearing the old man the one that is wicked, the one that is rebellious, the one that is sinful that is on the inside. Because once you are born into this world, you are automatically born into a world of darkness. That old nature, that wicked nature comes in you. But once you get saved and you are water baptized, you are burying that old man. Glory to God. So once you do the water baptism, you find that you will not be struggling to understand the scripture. You will not be struggling to obey God. When, when you have been walking in error and, and you see the truth from the word of God, it will be easy for you to switch because you have buried that rebellious, uh, wicked old man in you. He will not try to stop you because God doesn't want to stay drinking meat. He wants to come and start be eating meat, strong meat. And for you to eat strong meat in the kingdom of God, you have to be willing to hear the word of God, listen to the word of God and do whatever the Bible tells you to do. Glory to God. See, Jesus commands us to be baptized. So get water baptized if you have not been baptized. You know, it helps you to obey God and not struggle with sins and make you to be obedient to the word of God. You know, a lot of people have been, have been what I call false converts. And the Bible talks about false converts. The word of God has given us the rules. He has given us the revelation. But unfortunately, many believers, they don't have time to read the Bible. And some who read the Bible just read because for reading, say not to soak in the word and the message for themselves. But until you begin to do what the word of God says, you will not express the dominion of the Holy Spirit in your life. There's, I mean, a lot of people uh, ask, ask God for favor, ask for God for favor, favor. You have to do what God says for you to express the power of God in your life and the grace of God. The reason why we have to understand is that rapture is just around the corner. And for some of you who have not understood this, as we fellowship together, the Holy Spirit will quicken your spirits. It gives you the ability to walk in the light of the word of God so that if you have not been water baptized, if you have not been baptized into the Holy Ghost, into this power, get this baptism, get all of them. Don't miss out. Glory to God. You might be looking at me and say, Brother Ambrose or Pastor Ambrose, whichever way you want to call me. How will this help you? Number a few, a few things together I want to share with you. Number one, God wants us to have the right foundation. He wants you to have the right foundation. And the right foundation is based on the word. God wants us to, to have all the baptisms. He has made everyone available to you. The question that you should ask yourself, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Have you been saved the right way? Has the Holy Spirit baptized you into Christ? And the third one, have you been water baptized? What are you still waiting for? See, get all the baptism and don't cheat yourself out of God's best. Go for God's best. It's available for you. Water baptism, on the other hand, does not bring salvation. There is a church called uh, Church of Christ um, here in the USA. There's, uh, when they want to get you saved, they say you have to water baptize. What, all the focus in water baptism. 
in the Old Testament, yes, but in the New Testament, water baptism doesn't get you saved. It's when you put your faith on what Jesus did, then the Holy Spirit will now baptize you into Christ. Just like the verse that I just read to you. So, but water baptism is essential because it symbolizes you bearing that old nature that you came on with. So when you come out of that water, you are a new creation. And that old nature is gone. You are put on Christ. Glory to God. If you are not water baptized, you know, or, or power baptized, get one today. God wants you to have all three. And if you are watching me today, you are not yet saved. What are you waiting for? Come to Jesus today. Come to Christ. There is no other way to God. There is no other thing. There is nothing you do on this earth that will qualify for salvation. Let me read John chapter 6 and verse 37. John chapter 6 verse 37 as I begin to round up. He said, all that, this is Jesus talking. He said, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. Jesus is waiting for you. He will not cast you out. Don't wait till the last minute. Rapture is imminent. The time is coming when the Antichrist will be let loose. As a matter of the, all the prophecies before the Antichrist coming has been fulfilled. So rapture is imminent. You might say rapture is not in the Bible. Well, caught up where, the, where believers will be removed from this earth. And Satan will be loose to take total control. And he's going to destroy you. He's going to destroy everything. You don't want to be here. So come to God today the right way. Come to Jesus and get saved. When you look at that verse that I just read, John chapter 6 verse 37, he said, And him that cometh to me, I will not cast out. I will not wise cast out. The Greek word that was translated is a, is a compound word, cast out. The, cast, the Greek word is ekabalo. It means to send away. Ekbalo, it means to send away. And cast out, exo, it means away. Cast forth. That means Jesus will not cast you away. He, not, he will not reject you. It doesn't matter how sinful your nature is, how bad you are, if you can repent today and say jesus i turn from the wicked way and i turn to you it's not by your own efforts jesus already did everything for you all you need to do is say jesus i trust what you did on that cross i trust what you did so no matter your sins or how far you have backslidden you can come to jesus today be washed in his blood immerse into christ and power and bury the old man who is the devil that tried to rule you so I ask that you come to God today. If you are a minister and you've been preaching the dirty gospel and doctrine of demons and you know it, He still wants you. Remember, Jesus said on the last day, many will say, Lord, Lord, you know, um, we have done many things in your name. And Jesus said, I never knew you. You that walk in equity. It's a terrible thing to hear from Jesus. So if you are still watching me today, you have deceived people, you have lied with seducive gospel, you have taken money from them, you have slept with innocent virgins, you have slept with uh, other people's wives, your, your choir members, your members, your, your dickiness and everything, you can still come to God today. He's willing to baptize you into Christ. He's willing to receive you. Or into this, come to him today. You might have been a minister, have not even had the gospel. I've seen so many ministers who have not even had the gospel and the God saved. Thank to, to God. Through our ministry of God saved. Glory to God. I put the uh, ABCs of salvation here. It's very easy. God has made it so easy. How, how do you get saved? Number A, know that you are a sinner and lost and you need help. That is the first thing that you need help. And that's where repentance comes. Number B, hear the gospel. And the gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And the gospel is so simple. It's about the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. That Jesus died for all of your sins, past, present, and future sins. By shedding his blood, he was buried. He raised himself from the dead. Now he's in heaven. Now he said to you, if you can put your faith alone, not your works, on what he did, not your own effort, and say it to him, salvation is yours. So he washes away all your sins, everything. And he will not count your sins against you. So come to God today. Come to him in the name of Jesus. So when you put your faith in what Jesus did, just say to him, Romans chapter 10 verse 9, say, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Brothers and sisters, hell is terrible. Hell is terrible. We are very, very close to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Too close, too close, too close. And that's why I keep coming on online every day. It's not a bird, it's not bothersome for me. It's because I love souls. I know the heartbeat of God. So, if you have not been saved the right way, come to God today. Come to Him. The minute you confess Jesus to be your Lord and you believe with your heart, with a genuine heart, instantly, that split second, the Holy Ghost Himself will baptize you into Christ. And that minute, you are saved, you are sanctified, you are made holy, you are washed in His blood, and you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So come to God today. Come the right way. Glory to God. I pray that this short video has been a blessing to you. And if you have been 
uh, uh, inspired by our teachings, by our messages, just do me a favor, put your comments, like the video, share it to other people. Let's get as many people saved before the return of Jesus because he's knocking at the door right now. He's coming very soon. Unfortunately, in some of these third world countries, all they are keep praying for is breakthrough. Praying breakthrough, praying uh, favor, praying God will give you, God will give you husband, God will give you wife. Will give... This is the time for you to make sure that you are saved because rapture is knocking at the door. Remember that I always love you, but God made it so possible for you to know the time that Jesus is coming. You may not know the day or the hour, but you will know the season. And this is a season. So come to God today. Come the right way. And when you come, make sure you take all the baptism. Take everything before rapture comes. God bless you. I will see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.